All right, joining me now here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is Dina Razor. Dina is the author of the book, Betraying Our Troops. She's an investigative journalist for Truth Out, which you can find at truth-out.org. You can also find her on Twitter at Dina Lynn Razor. Dina, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. All right, so Dina, you recently wrote an article at Truth Out on some ways that we can actually improve the way that we vote here in the United States. Let's begin by discussing the problems, the various well-documented ways that mostly the right wing does to implement uh, things to actually make it harder for certain people to vote here in this country. Yeah, well, um, you know, it's very, very frustrating to try to watch and see how um, voting has been eroding and eroding and eroding. And um, I was especially struck looking, reading um, about Ohio and their election precincts and how all the politics going on, because, you know, you have these election boards and then they decide what goes on in the local precincts and not just Ohio, but all over the country. And you see that they just are doing everything they can to make it harder for people to get to the polls um, and for political reasons. And I hate to say that it's you know, mainly the Republicans under this this straw man they put up saying, oh, there's election fraud. But there's just been, been practically no, no one being able to find widespread election fraud at the precinct level. And... Um, so you you know you have to be suspicious. Then of course there's these the the push across country and state laws. So I think what really kind of triggered me on this one to look at it more carefully was when I finally saw the Rachel Maddow show not too long ago, where in Wisconsin they passed a law saying that they have these election monitors now, you know these precinct monitors where they are political people who are actually, you know, usually, in this case, Republicans, going around to uh, usually um, um, districts with poor people or people of color or immigrants, um, maybe naturalized citizens, and they stand around and they're able to, they're allowed to then go and follow you. And as you're getting your name and address and whatever to vote, they can come and say, I don't think that this person's a legitimate voter. And it it got to the point of ridiculousness that they could stand within one yardstick of you through the whole voting process. So you actually get in the booth and they could stand outside the booth. And I thought, this is so ridiculous. This is so intimidating. And um, I happen to know a long-time professional acquaintance with Phil Kiesling, who used to be the Secretary of State in Oregon. He was a journalist first, but then he begins for state of, of, in Oregon, and in the 1990s, he started the idea of looking at this vote by mail, and that's why I decided to look into it to see is is there a way that we could get, you know get rid of these ridiculous long lines? I think it was Georgia that just recently passed a law that if you're in this like eight hour line and you get out to go to the bathroom, you're not allowed to back be back in the line. You have to go to the end. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like they, they create they create the long lines and then you know and then make it impossible to even to get back into the line. It's like uh, when you're supposed to bring like a bag or something with you to go well, while you're in the me, line. Tell me how tell me how getting out of a line, asking somebody to hold your place like you do in a grocery store or something else, and you have to go to the bathroom and you come back. How that is going to somehow prevent voter fraud? Yeah. Well, and also I mean, just the fact that the the line shouldn't be that long to begin with, you know, and it's just like, yeah, and it's, it's, you know, it's like, well, we're going to make not, it, we're going to, you know, selectively make it so these people, it takes them forever to vote to, to, to discourage voting to begin with. So let's also make it even harder to make them like have to and, hold their and bladders voting, and stuff. Voting machines and counting and yeah. you know, they're not having enough machines in um, in poorer areas. And this is probably one of the more blatant and I would say I would say blatant and racist things that is just that are is out in the open that you know people talk about and 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 say it's sort of an ain't and awful but nobody seems to be really doing anything about it and I'm sort of alarmed I mean they're trying to go through the courts and that I yeah. have a that I hope would work but I am sitting here going I and the other thing that that kind of motivated me to look motivated me to look at this is what if Although some people say, oh, we have good precedents in the past. Well, we had good precedents against election finance, campaign financing in the past, but we got Citizens United when we got to the Supreme Court. 
And I thought, what if you go go through the courts and fight this all the way to to try to fix the precinct voting? And you go all the way through, and then you get the equivalent of a Citizens United ruling from the Supreme Court. And then we're really in trouble because now we've got this set, this new you know, Supreme Court ruling that you have to try to get legislation, constitutional amendment to fix. And and so I just I, I the the and there are a lot there are actually a lot of Democrats who are you know concerned about the voting by mail and some of their some of the points that I got I was sort of mystified on, but when I was saying, I'm going, what is this? What is this romantic view of the? Oh, we all have to get together in the community and vote, and you know, we all have to go together and do this and that. Well, you know, there was a day when everybody mailed their mail or got their mail at the post office, and they locked down. Right. They didn't have individual posting. So, and oh, it's a community thing. And I actually put a link to a Norman Rockwell painting, which is it's called Election Day 1944, and it's, you know, it's all the, the white people lined up to vote, and very Norman Rockwell looking like it's, oh, this is such great democracy. But we've evolved beyond that. Do we really all have to stand in a line to vote? Yeah. Um, well, let, let's let's discuss, and again, I'm talking to uh, Dina Razor, journalist for Truthout, truth-out.org, and on Twitter at Dina Lynn Razor. I mean, because I, I lived in Portland for a short amount of time and voted there. Uh, but uh, let, let's actually describe what is the, how does the process actually work? Because I can hear some people maybe not even knowing that this exists. And like, so what? How how does vote by mail work? How does it actually go about? What 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 is the actual process that it, that's in place? Because it's not just Oregon; it's in two other states other than Oregon, right? How does how does this right. actually work? Well, you know, it's it's getting to the uh, it, there's there there are the total vote by mail states, and Oregon is sort of the leader. And what yeah. they do, which is interesting because, you know, this also they find it actually helps in voter participation. Instead of you going, making the, making the um, check out to get your ballot and vote at a precinct, the state sends every registered voter a ballot. And so as a result, you know, you're, you have the ballot show up in your mailbox. And you so get it usually like about about three weeks ahead of the election, correct? Right, about right. around there, weeks, about before, about a month, yeah, three four weeks before the election. And mm-hmm. it's it's it, when you think about it, the state is being proactive, saying we want you to vote, right? And not just not just public service announcements. Here it is. Here's here's your you know here's your you are registered now. And if for some reason you don't get the ballot, you can always tell them, and they will you know there's time to fix it and, and fix any kind of problems. And um, you, of course, have, when you when you sign up to vote, you put your put in your signature. So every, you know they have the signature of a voter. So then you have um, these three weeks or whatever to sit there and look at it, read the issues, whatever. Up until election day at eight o'clock, you have a right to sit there and vote and put it in the mail. But you can either go down, you can either you know go to the post office, you can give it to your postal worker. But they also, I think it's the last few days before the actual election, on election day, they have a drop-off thing. Say, you, say you're one of these people that thinks there's a conspiracy and maybe the, you know, maybe maybe the someone has gotten hold of the uh, Postal Service and paid off somebody and they're going to take away all my votes. You know, I, I find <laughs> highly... There are people always talk about, oh, there's going to be this grand conspiracy. Well, to be able to make change thousands of votes... You have to pretty much get thousands of people to keep their mouth shut. And I have found mm-hmm. that being an investigative reporter, that usually if you get beyond four or five people, you don't have a conspiracy because the fact that people talk. Right. And so anyway, they the, the voter, there are at least two, in Oregon, there's at least two places in East, each voting district where there's a drop-off barrel, you know. You just drive right. up and throw it in. It's, it's actually real held by the state for elections, so it's not the Postal Service. So you don't have to send it through the mail. You can, If you want to go and drive up and drop it off, um, you can do that, too. 